Yeah, you're welcome along to our look ahead to the new SSE Airtricity season, which gets underway on Friday night. Who are best placed to challenge Dundalk for the league title this season? Can Derry City follow up on last season's great effort? And what about Finn Harps? Well, should we be surprised that there are so many people's favourites to be among the three clubs who will this year drop out of the top division? To answer those questions and a few more besides, we're joined in studio by two men who have a strong association with both Derry and Finn Harps, Felix Healy and Kevin McHugh. Gentlemen, you're very welcome. Cheers, Tim. No damage. Kevin, for yourself, I'm sure these are strange times. I can imagine this is probably your first pre-season in a while that you haven't been involved as a player. Yeah, just even Felix mentioned it there now. You'll be long enough um, retired, but those the last 19 years we used to turn out and go in, and it was a bit like come back to school when the, the pre-season started. You're, you got the, the butterflies in the stomach. You wanted to go on and meet the new players, the and the new plans for the season. So I'm not going to lie, I did miss it. Um, I don't miss the running part of it, um, yeah. but certainly I miss the camaraderie and getting into the change room with the boys. And um, I'd be jealous. I've been done and visited them a few times there recently and watched them train. You know, and you do get jealous standing and watching yeah. them. You know, but yeah. um, the only thing you miss actually is the dressing room. Yeah. yeah, but you won't miss the rest of it. Yeah, you, you, know, you, you 100%. miss you miss you miss the you miss all the scandal and and everything else. Yeah, you feel like you're out of touch from the whole yeah. thing when you yeah. when you leave the dressing room. But I definitely miss that part of it. You know. Well, perhaps the players might not say this, but for the supporters, Felix, the season seems to have crept up on us all of a sudden, and uh, you know suddenly it all gets underway next Friday night. Perhaps the main talking point in the off season was the change in the league structures. All of a sudden now we are we are going to be in a situation where three teams will be automatically relegated at the end of the season. So the pressure is going to be on right from word go. Well, uh, the, there is a suggestion that there's doom and gloom all over uh, Donegal. You know, everybody that you talk to thinks that Harps are certainly going down this this year. The, a lot of the the body language, the talk from everybody, it's been very negative. Ollie, I think, was very critical of the change. That, that's come this way. That, there's no doubt, Jimmy. I mean, we sat here last year and we talked about how difficult it was going to be for Harps. It's, it's doubly difficult this year. It was remarkable that they stayed up last year. It was, it was, it was a great the start, as, as we chatted about earlier. The start was vital for Harps last year and it got, got them off too. Whereas the wheels come off later on and they just about hung on. But it's going to be incredibly difficult. It is very difficult. Up, up until five or six weeks ago, they maybe had three players. And, and within the football circles, everybody was, where are they going to get players? And they end up bringing back players. You're in the, the position where Harps is, where you're signing players that you probably, in other days, you wouldn't sign. But you're left with no choice. And when you're left with the budget restrictions that you have, it is incredibly difficult. And if Harps stay in the Premiership at the end of the season, you know, all they will have performed a miracle. Mm. As simple as that. Yeah, well, listen, it's not a nice evening outside. The rain's coming down. And if we go back 12 months, Felix, that was the situation on the night that Harps opened their campaign against Derry City. It was a great night at Finn Park in terms of the event and the, and the spectacle. Big crowd, not a bad game. And the result, as you predicted, I think, when we had our chat last year ahead of the new season, the result went the way of Harps. You want to give him a big head now? Yeah, well... Well, w- in the first... Uh, no matter, Kevin tell you this, no matter how many times you train in pre-season or how many games you play, it's amazing the change in, in the dressing room and uh, when you go out to actually play a competitive match for the first time. It, it, it's hard to explain. Uh, I mean, I played for teams who had fantastic pre-seasons and couldn't win a match for a couple of months and people you play in pre-season, can't, nothing clicks and all of a sudden. It's very strange when you start off again. The one thing about last year was is, is I, I felt sorry for for anybody. The, 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 the Fen Park pitch in the first game of last season was diabolical for a senior football club. Diabolical. When, when that pitch is bad, it's horrendous. Uh, we talked earlier about the plastic surfaces. The one thing with plastic surfaces is you, it's, it, they're what they call a fast pitch. The ball moves quicker. It's always whereas when a pitch is like a, a pudding, which is Finn Parks, it takes ages to move the ball around the pitch. And it's been one of the great things that worked to Harps' advantage, mm-hmm. particularly against the better teams. 
I saw the playoff game against Limerick the year before. Kevin, the pitch was a pudding. Limerick were passing it, but it was taking them 20 passes to nearly get in through the final third of the pitch. Mm. Whereas in a fast pitch, that doesn't happen. Uh, and going back to the start of last year, if I was Ollie, I would be up to every trick in the book. You know, Higgsy's there, and, and I think what they did was somebody brought... The first thing Higgsy did one year was brought the pitch and made it smaller, which helps mm. as well with the, when you play in the better teams. I would leave the pitch as bad as I could possibly leave it, particularly when I'm playing the best teams. Yeah, yeah. If you're playing, if you're playing a game where you don't really... You're not interested in how you play, it's about results, where some of the better teams are interested in playing and getting results... Make it as bad for them. I I happened my playing days playing for Derry with the treble team. We used to go to Daly Mount and it wasn't even cut. We'd go and play Bray, pitch wasn't even cut. It was left rutted. They should do that at Finn Park. Yeah, yeah. To try every trick in your book that you can imagine to get away with it. Because that's one of the, the best things that Harps are going for. Is the playing surface at Finn Park, particularly for the better clubs, and when it's wet and damp, and it always is, you very, very rarely, there's maybe a two month period in the summer at Arps where you get what's called a fast pitch. The pitch is good, it's a good surface to play on, where the rest of the time it's slow, it's dead, and it takes you ages to move the ball about. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kevin, there's, there are new faces now at Harps mm-hmm. uh, Danny Morrissey, Kieran O'Connor. Uh, Killian Cantwell, Johnny Bonner, those guys are all going to have to get used to this playing surface at Finn Park. Where is they're, I know, I know they're, they're, they're settling in well though? Th- that's the I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take too much away from the playing surface. They've actually spent a hell of a lot of money there in the last two months yeah. um, getting the whole thing redrained. So it's probably it's actually going to be, I know, <laughs> it's probably gonna go against some things, but um, some of the players that they've sent in, just as you mentioned, Kieran Cantwell and especially Kieran O'Connor. Um, Brilliant signing from Dundalk. Brilliant, yeah. like uh, chatting to even uh, Stevie O'Donnell. He says he's a top player, and they would expect to have him. They were surprised that they were even allowed to let him let him go out and loan. So all they done a, a master stroke there, getting him in, and he's probably his best signing was Sean Houston, getting him back on board. Yes. Especially the way um, probably with Harps are going to play, especially at home, it'll be a counter attacking style, um, and Houston's key to that. He can carry the ball 40, 50 yards at his ease. So those kind of players. Um, and even looking at the squad in general, there's not many players in that squad don't, don't want to play football. And to be fair, I think even going back to Derry game, I think we we definitely played the the, the pitch better than Derry. Yeah. Um, their manager was out stepping on Davis as we were speaking about before the game, and I think that played into our hands because it gave the players an excuse. But it certainly did help Harps for the first four or five home games. Um, yeah. Sharma Covers and that come to town. Uh, and Derry, we, we got a lot of points at home in the first the first quarter, so that was key, and hopefully it'll be key again. But I, I can't see the pitch being as bad as, as it was last year. There's no way getting away from it. It was poor at the start of last season, and the, the club... I would get the fire bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think Ollie's done really well. As Felix says, like three or four weeks ago, on the Queen Lay, it was looking bleak. You're thinking, yeah. right, who's... And then... As Ollie does, uh, he does what he does best. He talks players around and he pulls players out of the hat, and he's done it again. Um, I'm not saying they've a, a fantastic squad, but when you look at their maybe from 10 to 14, they have really, really strong players. Yeah. And outside of that, you're going to be looking at your 19 players, maybe making a having a step up. Yeah. Um, from from the last couple of years. From the way from the way that Harps are going to play, Kieran, Kieran O'Connor is, is is going to be going to be an outlet for them. Mm-hmm. He's a wee bit. Uh, he's not as good a player as, as young Chrissy Breen. Uh, but what he will do is that when you break, and you knock, you can knock a ball up past people, and he will stretch the pitch. He will stretch the match, and he get people moving quickly up up the pitch. Uh, he's a worker. He's a wee grafter. I I would think that Higgsy, Stephen Kenny's done Higgsy a favour as to doing Holly a favour because I think he did. And I think Keon O'Connor was at Derry as well. He, he, when uh, I think he did, that's right. It was Higgsy that probably <coughs> down there as well. And he's a wee guy that, that that people will see. You know, he chase a bit of paper, and he will particularly when Harps are under the cosh and you launch it. He will run in behind people, and that always stretches. Yeah, every he seems to have a match. really good work ethic. And, he's, and he, he does he does have a good work mm. ethic. Um, uh, the the difficulty that Keon O'Connor has and. and he, he, as Kevin has said about Stephen O'Donnell and them are surprised he's still only a young fella and given where, where Dundalk Football Club are at at this moment in time you've got to be top 
you've got to be really almost the finished article yeah. and be the top, real top, top player to get in their squad. So, so it's, 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 it's good for Harps that he's there. Yeah. Well, we can come back to Harps in, 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 a, in a minute or two, but, you know, O'Connor, it must be remembered, is only on loan from Dundalk. So, as you say, Felix, he, he could... He could end up back there before too long. But Derry City have also managed to attract a couple of new signings. One of them is a loan signing as well, Nicky Logue uh, from Dundee. Uh, not too much activity in terms of, of new faces coming and going at the Brandywell, Kevin. But I think the suggestion is that the two players that have gone out, the Melland and McCormick, are probably two of the better players from last season. Yeah, it's probably a bit like Dundalk. A couple of players have gone out. I think you're not going to replace them in this country anyway. Um, and maybe getting boys on a loan whether well, they're good enough they step up the mark and it's the same with the young lad Michael Kennedy who came in for Derry there from Charlton as well um, has he finished the article? I don't know um, they replace uh, Vermellon and McCormick two really top players who made them tick from the middle and your man Vermellon was as good as attacking defender as I've seen in the league for years so it's going to be very hard to replace that um, yeah. But what's going for Derry? They have a really good spine to the team between Jared Doherty, McBride, McNamee, and, and Patterson. Always get the goals. So from that end, the, the, they're in a stronger position than most teams. They have yeah. a really good spine to their team. Um, but I, I don't know too much about the lads coming in and loan. Yeah. Um, I know they're youth internationals, but the League of Ireland can be punishing, um, especially when you're fighting up around the top end of the table. It's yeah. you have to be the finished article in the league coming into the league. Yeah, Felix, how is Kenny Shields and Derry City, how are they going to deal with the situation now that they're playing in McGinn Park and Bunkrana for, for much of this season? Well, it, it's, uh, you know, Kenny had surprised everybody last year. The, the Derry were surprised, you know, qualifying for Europe was, was exceptional given where the club were at. Uh, when, you're, when you're having to move... The whole club's in flux, given what's happened at the Brandy World, it's, it's, it's all change. Um, you've lost two guys who who were, you know, had really good seasons last year. The young Flynn McCormick, Conor McCormick, did really well for Terry last year, and yet he's 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 journeyed down to Dublin. You know the usual merry-go-round there. He he's going to Cork. Is it Cork? He's Cork, going to Cork. He's, he's going to and and uh, but Vemelant will 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 be missed. But I think it was known for quite some time that, that he would was going to Dundalk. But like, it doesn't matter who you are. You, you know, Stephen Kenny's in the market for players. Ollie Horgan's in the market for players. Kenny Sheets is in the market for players. But all three of them are working within a framework of what they can afford. And there's a massive difference between all three. You know, it can't be that Ollie's dealing with people at 200 euros. Kenny, Steve... Stephen Kenny is working with a thousand to two thousand euro. Where where Kenny Sheets is working with five and six hundred euro. Yeah. So so you're in the market for different players, and and uh, that's how you marry them all together. Uh, the changes at the brand well, that uh, is Kenny Shields in some ways has has exceeded all expectations last year, and that's sometimes when that happens, you make a rod for your own back. How is he going to sustain that this year? Yeah. Uh, um, the one thing with Derry is going to McGinn Park. We all know McGinn's a great, great surface. Uh, 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 Kenny Sheets' teams like to play; they like to pass it. Uh, but how that's all going to be married with a different environment of going yeah. down there, and how it all pans out. It, it it is going to be one of those. It, it it'll be interesting to see how it how it develops. That could be key to their season. You're right. Their, that whole environment. How the players get used to the the pitch, the change rooms, the whole. Like if they get off the bad start, will the crowds come from Derry and the Bunkrana? I don't know. If they get off the great start, the whole thing could snowball. So yeah. it's yeah. The whole well, thing's up in the, there. the question is, will Derry be up among the leading clubs? in the Premier Division next season. We can have a look at the, the top end of the table, but first of all, we'll go for a quick commercial break.